Well, good morning to each one of you here. It's worship time. This is now the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. And his ongoing focus in the first chapter of Mark continues to focus on his purpose, Jesus with us, for the sake that the message of repent and believe in the gospel be poured out into people's lives in all our needs. Stay tuned and hear what his focus today is with you and me. We will follow the order of divine service setting to the order of Holy Communion and today the opening hymn, 790, the first three verses right now of praise to the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs> Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Let all who hear, now to His temple draw near, joining in glad stand as you're able. We now begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority of his word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will sing to the Lord. 
Consider me and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord. Because he has dealt bountifully with me. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is according to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Note Isaiah 40, from the time of Advent, those opening verses speak of God saying, comfort, comfort my people. Now, we hear these words at the conclusion, the second half of this chapter. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, 
who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who dwells, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my, my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring the honoring and coming to his courts. The epistle reading continues to follow in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, now at chapter 9, verses 16 through 27. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not my, being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Worship continues then with the gospel anthem, 
Praise the one who breaks the darkness, 849. which is the basis for today's message, is according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Glory to you, O Lord. And immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother lay, mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. The hymn of the day. Hail to the Lord's anointed 398. <laughs> Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater Son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away Life in Jesus' uplifting presence. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? So begins Psalm 13. It's a psalm of David, sent to the choir master. What do you think should be the kind of tune that should go with these words, these experiences, these trials so common to life under the sun? Recall your last bout with the flu? Or was it COVID? Your last struggle of health? And of course, right here, with Bill's situation. Now we've all experienced it in, in yet another way. I'm experiencing the nag of pain that's growing due to the degeneration of healthy, healthy cartilage tissues in my hips. It's like a slow brewing fire in my bones. 
that has translated to muscles that themselves seem to burn when I walk the walk I now walk, yet grateful for my walker. Nevertheless, I can recall and compare as still worse the aches and pains and discomfort of nausea and severe flu, diarrhea, and worse to me, the times that I have had the spinning, turning of dizziness, of vertigo. And then there's the burn and headache of fever. <clears throat> Your pains might well be even more challenging to bear. On these simple levels, it is good to know you have kept me in your prayers and where I am aware of some of your situations, I hold you also in prayers before the Lord. This psalm is worthy of reflection. We encounter verse 3. Consider me and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Truly, the gift of days, of many days in this life, is an amazing and abundant blessing. Yet this verse touches on our perhaps growing awareness that there's an unavoidable problem. Our bodies age, various functions break down, pain, losses of many and various functions, loss of capabilities at many levels. These all point to the reality of the sleep of death. They point to a time all our bodily functions will cease. God's word truly expresses the soul's lament. Yet it doesn't merely commiserate The word of the Lord directs our souls to God himself. His word presents us with hope in contrast to this sleep of death. He bids us to call upon the Lord, our creator, whose power and authority to speak the stars throughout the universe into being, and even name each one of them, redirects to our lives. The eternal and almighty God purposes to enter our lives. He speaks his word to call forth the hope of light and life in Jesus' uplifting presence. In Jesus' word, his life that enters you and me through holy baptism, or rather I should say, in Jesus' word, in his life that enters you and me through holy baptism, his restoring life that nourishes you and me through the holy body and blood given us in his holy supper, in his gracious will and love for poor, sin-ridden human beings, his word sends you now a message for your time of pain. Mark's gospel account wastes no time to show how God enters our lives. Jesus, the Son of God, preaches and teaches with authority. He declares his purpose is to rescue us. He calls us to turn from our own ways, repent, believe the good news of his kingdom, which is fulfilled in his presence. His life is all about God's care and love for us people who are otherwise stumbling, falling sick, burning out, dying. So he went regularly to the synagogue to preach and proclaim. Mark writes, and I believe he writes with the insight of Peter informing his pen, under the moving of God, the Holy Spirit, <coughs> And immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. Jesus' word and influence doesn't just happen at church, but it starts there. 
St. Mark's account strikes like lightning immediately. That word ups the ante. It gives urgency to the message. For this Jesus, baptized to take on our human need and <coughs> sins, now battles on our behalf. And who does he encounter? What's the situation he addresses? Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. She's in a time of pain, maybe even delirium. Here we go. This reflects <clears throat> our human plight. We may go so long on our own power, but there's the time weakness and need eventually come hard on us. Recall your illness. Recall the yearly passing of human lives. We are vulnerable. We must ultimately recognize and admit our need for help. And Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her and she began to serve them. Welcome to life in Jesus' uplifting presence. He sets people free in soul and body. Let's retrace what's happened so far. Immediately that Sabbath day, after preaching and teaching the word of God in its truth and purity with authority, Jesus left the synagogue. He took along his newly chosen disciples and entered our kind of realistic world. He is present with his people in their need. This gospel text proclaims him present now, also today. He is with you and me in our need. In his healing presence, Simon's mother-in-law quickly is restored to her own purposeful calling. There she is, serving her guests, serving her Lord, probably the late afternoon meal. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. To human me, this sounds a bit overwhelming. What a response! What a job to do! Our health system is overwhelmed. But what is the gospel message for these in their suffering and pain? And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. When God speaks, his word is not void. He accomplishes what he purposes and prospers in the thing for which he sends it. His word cannot be trapped as false or evil testimony. God's word in the flesh, his only son, Jesus, accomplishes what God wills in real time. He heals grown men and women, both those acutely ill and those long afflicted, as well as young boys and small girls, even teens and those who should be in their prime. He heals all from their diseases. He drives away demons and the evil afflictions they cause in people. In his preaching and healing, Jesus is shown to be the Messiah, the one who does all that the scriptures say God does. He who created the stars and set them in place, even giving them each their names, is among his people. That one from eternity is the one whom Holy Scripture reveals to us. He has the mission to proclaim his good news to all. Mark's account indicates also that he does not become distracted, but moves on to the next and the next and the next village so to reach all 
That is why he came. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Today's scripture readings are like an on-the-road report. <clears throat> During a drive or campaign that's moving toward a greater day, in Jesus Christ, we see and hear the nature and purpose of God in being with his fallen creation. He does not come up as Dr. Death. He does not offer medical assistance in dying. He gets to the core of our need. He comes to bear the sin of me, 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 and it's all about you. He takes them on himself. As the gospel purpose of his own life was lived out in full, we are awed by the fullness of love for our lives that his uplifting presence truly means. In his flesh, he would bear the punishment of the curse our every sin deserves, death, and even far more the terrible but just wrath of God's judgment against our wrongs, he atoned for, for us. In Dr. Life's hands, by this one, God's son, laying down his innocent human and also divine and perfect body and life, Jesus destroys death. This is his wonderful mission. He came to redeem and restore all people. When Simon Peter's mother-in-law was lifted by Jesus, she was healed. It was only moments with her Lord, and she was restored and began to serve them. Psalm 13 concludes, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Awake, dear soul, and sing. And even if ever you cannot sing, yet you can pray in the Spirit to the Lord Jesus until he lifts you up in his right time. Rejoice, dear soul, and be lifted up to new and lasting life in Jesus, uplifting presence. He breathes the new life by his Holy Spirit so that you take his word and its promises into your heart and mind and body. Even should your body die, know this by faith. In the end, he will also breathe his powerful life again into your body and you will be raised from the dead to live in Jesus uplifting presence. For do you not see? Have you not heard? Jesus Christ is Lord. He is faithful. He loved you to death to love you to life. For he, the crucified Son of God, is victorious over death. He is life eternal. He is your life forever. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you're able. We now confess this gift of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our worship then continues with the prayer of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for Christ Jesus sent into our flesh, for his preaching of the gospel, and his casting out of the corrupting works of sin and Satan, which we could not overcome, and that by his word he would rescue us from every evil of body and soul, also for Bill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that God would give joy to his servants on whom he has laid the necessity to preach the gospel, that many would be saved in every nation, and that together we may share in the blessings of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all Christian homes and for the endurance that comes from the Holy Spirit, and for husbands and wives, parents and children, that they may be disciplined and self-controlled in their duties, run their course in this life, and continue to the end in the holy Christian faith, ready to receive the imperishable wreath of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our land, that the Lord, who created this world's foundations and holds sway over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth, would graciously preserve it, and for our leaders and people, that God would not disregard us for our sins, but renew us, that our lives may be peaceful and our country governed according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in any need, that through our prayers they would be brought to the great physician of body and soul, whose hand turns away demon, disease, and every ill effect of sin especially for Emily, Joyce, Ginger, Mark, Val, Kelvin, Judy, Richard, Audrey, Linda and Gary Lee, Marjorie and son Drew, Twyla and Bill, Shirley, Phyllis, Travis, Myrna and Gabriel, Elsie, Rita and Jack, Renee, Fern, Heinz, Lee, Robert, Howard and Hannah, Carol, Reinhold, Audrey M, Randy and Gail, Eva and Pastor Jonathan, our extended families and neighbors, our brothers and sisters in faith in Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Gaza, Sudan. And for these we name before the Lord now. I pray to the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that the government will not put people that have mental illness and their life prematurely support them and give them strength. We pray also that the Lord would comfort the family of Pastor Les Carlson and all who remember the Lord's grace in ministry through him at the service this Saturday at St. Paul's Oliver. For these all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who commune, that we would come to Christ's Supper, believing that where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation, and that the blood of Christ, which atoned for our sins, would make us whole, strengthen us against every spiritual attack of the devil, turn us in love toward our neighbor, and preserve us in body and soul to life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today again, uh, please bring forward the offering and uh, please take it also to the altar. And I will prepare for the uh, offertory. Uh, 
God's peace be with you, Judy. I then invite the congregation to stand as they're able as we join in the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Service now continues with the service of the sacrament. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Love of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Please be seated. We sing, Jesus comes today with healing, the first four verses, 620. <clears throat> Jesus comes today with healing, knocking at my door, appealing, offering pardon, grace, and peace. He himself makes preparation, and I hear his invitation, come and taste the blessed feast. Christ himself, the priest presiding, yet in bread and wine abiding, in this holy sacrament. Make it the bread of life once broken, and the cup the precious token of his sacred covenant. Under bread and wine, though lowly, I receive the Savior holy, blood and body given for me. Very Lamb of God from heaven, who to bitter death was given, hung upon the cursed tree. God descends with heavenly power, gives himself to me this hour, in this ordinary sign. On my tongue his pledge receiving, I accept his grace believing, that I taste his love divine. Welcome then to the Lord's table. Now may this true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you in the true faith, body and soul, to life eternal. Go in his peace. Amen. I invite the congregation then to stand as we join in the post-communion canticle. <clears throat> Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. He shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Then let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives 
and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated and we now have the closing hymn 790, Praise to the Lord. Verses 4 and 5. Praise to the Lord who will prosper your work and defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder on the what the Almighty can do, as with His love He befriends you. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that has life and breath, come now with praises. May Jesus, who proclaims the good news of the gospel that saves us, and who heals every disease, who casts away every demon and affliction, abide with you and grant us that ultimate deliverance as he teaches us also to pray in his Lord's Prayer. Go in peace. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, hallelujah.